Now this is part one of my organisation series of videos, in this case covering German infantry divisions during World War II and how they were structured during the entire war. I created these videos, or will create this series of videos, in order to assist my efforts in creating army lists for a number of different micro armour sets of rules. I found it surprisingly difficult in getting accurate information on the subject. Either I could obtain an accurate snapshot of the formation, but could not obtain info of the changes which occurred, or alternatively there was a serious mismatch between formal organisation and the actual organisation in the field. As much as possible, I will use English terms in this video, such as tank destroyer rather than Panzerjager. Before I proceed with this video, I wish to raise a caveat. My analysis of TONEs has been focused on creating army lists for micro armor sets of rules. As a result, uh, this does not meet the robust standards you would typically expect of a historical analysis. So if your expectation is an in-depth, highly accurate and never disclosed analysis of the structure of the division, this video may not be what you need. The other point I wish to raise before I proceed with the video is my sources. In some cases I have obtained high quality official structures. In other cases unreliable TONE diagrams. The bulk of my information comes from the excellent Niehorsa documents. In my case I use the source from Carl and the www.niehorsa.org site. My other sources are too numerous to list here, but they range from Wargaming TONE books from the 1970s to Wiki. The final caveat is that uh, I generally do not include transport supply signals and other admin formations. My main focus is combat troops, although I must admit in an emergency non-combat troops often found themselves in combat, so perhaps this omission is not such a good idea. Nonetheless, um, if you're interested in the medical battalion of the German Infantry Division, this is not the video that you should be viewing. The German Infantry Divisions were raised in waves, with the first four waves representing the bulk of the divisions which were involved in the invasion of Poland. Subsequent waves were closer to the 1940 structure, which we'll cover later in this video. The main difference between the first and second wave, and then the second half, the third and fourth waves, was the Reconnaissance Battalion, with the later waves having a much more powerful Reconnaissance Battalion. I'm unsure why this change occurred, but could have been related to the lack of horses, or maybe the increased production of bicycles. Looking first at the German Infantry Regiment, which was pretty consistent across the first four waves, and actually even subsequent waves, this shows the heavy equipment that was contained within the regiment, or a single regiment. The Germans used infantry guns more than most other nations, which could take the place of mortars, but did have a direct fire capabilities, which mortars lacked. Unfortunately, they were expensive, heavy, but I must admit very effective at neutralising the infantry position, and once armed with heat, even armoured vehicles, although I suspect uh, this may have been rare. The German MMG was also unique, acting as a LMG and HMG, and based on the mount that it used, it provided, very, it provided a very effective weapon which the Allies had difficulty matching. The artillery regiment consisted of 36 10.5cm howitzers and 12 15cm howitzer. There was a lack of 15cm howitzers early in the war, so in some cases they were substituted with 10.5cm howitzers or in some cases, uh, 10 centimetre guns, or canonen. We'll now look at the supporting battalions of the Infantry Division. The Infantry Division contained three supporting battalions. An anti-tank battalion, which also contained two centimetre flat guns, an engineer battalion, and a reconnaissance battalion. The beefier reconnaissance battalion, used in the third and fourth wave, was equipped with infantry guns and anti-tank guns which the earlier reconnaissance battalion did not possess. While the first fourth wave infantry divisions generally stayed unchanged, the subsequent waves had a slightly different structure. I must point out it's also possible that this slightly different structure was implemented to, on the first four waves as well in May 1940, but um, I have no evidence to suggest this actually occurred or did not occur. The number of HMGs in the heavy weapons companies of the infantry battalions was increased to 12. 
This may have been implemented in the earlier divisions as well by May 1940. There was a lack of 15cm howitzers, so many divisions only possessed eight 15cm howitzers with other howitzers filling the gap. The anti-tank battalions lost their 2cm flat guns. Accounts in 1940 indicated that they were still often there, but may have been attached from core level rather than being organic. Finally, the reconnaissance battalion was altered once again with a hybrid structure being implemented. It's possible this structure was also implemented in the early divisions as well. Without a detailed TONE of all the divisions in May 1940, it's impossible for me to be certain, but my guess is that this is all part of the move from a cavalry or horse-mounted reconnaissance to cycle-mounted reconnaissance. The changes between September 1939 and May 1940 is indicated in red. As you can see here, the number of HMGs, or probably more accurately MMGs, increased to 12 in the heavy weapons companies of the infantry battalion. I'm uncertain how many artillery regiments use the 10.5cm howitzer to fill in for the lack of 15cm. I do not hear very much about it in the historical accounts. It was only when the Germans got to Russia this may have caused an issue, which could be the reason why I don't hear about it so much in France. The 15 centimetre, as you could well imagine, was primarily used, or could be used, as counter-battery because of its extended range. Um, and the German 15 centimetre was not particularly a good weapon in this particular area, particularly when it was facing the 122 millimetre from Russia. However, in France, this may not have been an issue because of the quick pace of the campaign and the fact the Germans could use the Luftwaffe to fill in any gaps. The reconnaissance battalion seemed to be a hybrid version of the first and second wave and the third and fourth wave, with a cycle or consisting of a cycle company, cavalry company, supported by motorised heavy weapons companies. This could have been due to the fact that there was a lack of horses, um, but I'm only guessing there. The anti-tank battalion lost its organic 2cm flat company, but I expected, I expected that this was still attached from the core level as required. While the German Panzer and motorised divisions changed a great deal between May 1940 and June 1941, this was not the case for the infantry divisions. The only real change was the introduction of the 5cm anti-tank gun. However, I would guess this was rare in the infantry divisions. It's possible some divisions may have received 5cm AT guns in the anti-tank battalions only, and it was probably unlikely the infantry regiments received any of these. Typically, the infantry regiments got the lesser anti-tank guns with the better ones held at a higher level under divisional control, which could be allocated as required. There was a minor manpower change in the infantry company, which at this scale has no effect except it added one person. Not quite sure what that was. Of course, by October 1941, I'm certain the situation was very different to what you see here, with most divisions being under strength. By January 1942, this would have been even more pronounced, with casualties reaching 900,000. This could represent losses of up to 20%, so you could expect most of the infantry divisions to be 20% less, particularly in terms of infantry strength. It's unlikely many divisions received the 5cm anti-tank gun in June 1941, although more have been, may have been equipped by January 1942. I'm uncertain where these weapons were initially prioritised. I'm guessing the motorised divisions and panzer divisions rather than the infantry divisions. And I would also have to guess that the uh, anti-tank battalion received these weapons well before the regiments received the weapon. One interesting point which always puzzled me is that did the Germans mix the uh, 3.7 or 3.7 centimetre and the 5 centimetre pack within the battalion? It seems logical that they would have, because the British and the Americans certainly did, and so did the Russians, but um, there's very little evidence to suggest this, so um, I'm uncertain. We are entering uh, an era where there's actually a surprisingly lack of information in terms of organisational structure. I'm really uncertain what kind of changes would have occurred between June 41 and June 42. It's possible the infantry divisions involved in the 1942 offensive down south may have been at full strength, but the divisions in Army Group North and Centre certainly were not. It's highly likely these divisions have moved to the two battalion structure already, and it's also possible some divisions in the south were similar. 
It's also possible some divisions may have received the 5cm anti-tank gun in numbers, but I have to assume any such weapon went to the anti-tank battalion first. One thing which I seem to have noticed is the way the Germans did not mix anti-tank guns in the companies, and possibly even battalions. This could be because of the lack of sources to work with, but could have been done to simplify ammunition supply. If so, then I would suggest most of the 5cm anti-tank guns were in the motorised and panzer divisions, and very few infantry divisions possess them. However, I really do lack source material on that particular point. The Germans experienced a major reorganisation in 1943, forming what was called the Neue Infantry Division, or Neue Grenadier Division. In many cases, the changes were simply a reflection of the reality of the situation on the ground. What is not shown here is the large number of Russians which were part of the division in supporting roles. The biggest change was the adoption of the 2 Battalion Regiment. The anti-tank battalion now consisted of a mix of anti-tank guns, tank destroyers and anti-aircraft guns. In most cases, the engineering battalion lost its bridges for obvious reasons. They weren't really launching many offensives across rivers at this point in time. Finally, the reconnaissance battalion was replaced by a Felicia battalion. It's highly likely this was also a reflection of the reality on the ground. The reconnaissance battalion was quickly absorbed into the line infantry and to give the division a reserve, a mobile and elite battalion was formed. This is only a guess, but it makes sense, and from the gaming point of view, um, this kind of setup was actually very useful, so it could have also been useful in real life. I will deal with the equipment changes in the following images. The most obvious equipment change was the introduction of the Panzerschreck and the reduction in strength of the anti-tank guns. While most would be 5cm by August 1943, with a rare 7.5cm anti-tank gun, the shortfall was taken up by the Panzerschreck. Unlike the Americans, the Germans organised a dedicated Panzerschreck formations, although I am uncertain how they were um, used in August 1943 and how many were actually in place in August 1943. I suspect not many were in place. It should be noted the Panzerschreck was introduced at the end of 1942, but it was really only uh, probably after August 1943 that you saw it in large quantities on the Eastern Front. While I have minimal references, it's likely the anti-tank rifles were replaced by Panzerschrecks in the infantry company, or as possible this formation was totally removed, which is probably the most likely um, uh, answer as the strength of the company had reduced from 191 men to 145 men. Schwer considered ad hoc allocation of, of this weapon as a waste, and under his urging the weapon was concentrated into company-side formation. As a result, I suspect if a Panzerschreck company was president, the ad hoc allocation was not, and vice versa. In terms of manpower, this represented a major drop. However, the number of LMGs did dramatically increase. Many divisions were also equipped with the SG-44 assault rifles, so firepower probably remained the same, if not improved. In defence, this was more than adequate, but in offence, this lack of feet on the ground would have had an effect. Finally, the 5cm mortar was gone, or at least officially. However, the German infantry did try and hold onto this weapon as it gave the infantry on foot some indirect fire capability. There are references of this weapon still being used in Italy well into 1943 and early 1944. In its place, the 8cm mortar was initially assigned to the infantry company. This is a rather heavy weapon to allocate to the infantry company. I also suspect the 12cm mortar may have made an appearance, but I lack a lot of evidence of this, at this point in time at least. Obtaining accurate and consistent information about the anti-tank battalion, particularly in 1943, was very difficult, and is very difficult, and I personally feel it varied a great deal, which is the reason why it's difficult to find consistent information. Many divisions almost certainly retain the old structure, and this may have represent an ideal structure. I suspect there were still many three-company anti-tank battalions equipped with a mix of 5cm and 7.5cm anti-tank guns, possibly even 3.7cm. The image that you see here represents the official ideal structure with a full company of 7.5cm anti-tank guns supported by a company of Marder 1s or 2s. 
The French-based Marder 1s would have been mainly present in France, so I assumed in Russia most were one of the two versions of the Marder 2. I also suspect not every division was equipped with these weapons. Finally, the anti-aircraft guns were brought back. I suspect a reflection of the loss of air superiority. This was mainly towed 2cm AA guns, but my sources also indicate 2cm SP weapons. I suspect most of these would have been truck-mounted 2cm AA guns. The Felicier Battalion replaced the Reconnaissance Battalion, which probably had disappeared well before August 1943. As a result, the Felicia Battalion took up the task of reconnaissance and reserve formation. Most of the motorcycles and horses were gone, but the ubiquitous cycle became more prominent. This formation was support, supposed to be the elite and highly mobile formation of the infantry division, although I am uncertain how this was achieved. Perhaps there were some motor transports present for the heavier weapons. I have no sources which show any of these troops armed with, armed with the Panzerschreck, it, but it's possible some may have been. As with the standard infantry, the number of LMGs was very high, giving this formation seriously impressive firepower. There is a major gap in German sources moving into early 1944. It's likely that the August 1943 structure was rolled out into most of the infantry divisions up to August 1944 when the next major change occurred. One note, in the West, and possibly elsewhere, there were many static infantry divisions. The organisations of these varied wildly, with some in France being equipped with old French weapons, particularly any tank weapons. I will not cover these formations as my army lists were designed for mobile scenarios rather than assaults on a static infantry manning fortifications. While not an official uh, structure, um, we know that by June 1944, additional minor changes in manpower in the infantry companies occurred, which at this scale was really minor. The only significant change was the official appearance of the 12 centimetre mortar. I have no doubt that these were represented, were present earlier, but may have been held at core level. We now see this weapon appearing in the heavy weapons company of the infantry battalion. When the 12 centimetre mortar was introduced sometime before June 1944, the 8 centimetre mortar in infantry companies were removed. This weapon was a bit heavy for an infantry company, so I'm not surprised. To compensate, the infantry battalion got two 12 centimetre mortars, and this was a very effective weapon indeed. It caused the Americans serious issues and was critical as the German artillery was vulnerable to US counter battery fire, so would not be used for minor fire support missions. The trend was obvious, greater levels of self-sufficiency, driven by necessity rather than being an optical, optimal strategy. After the collapse of the Germans in France in 1944, and probably also in Russia when Army Group Centre was destroyed, the Germans created a number of ad hoc infantry divisions. This was, for want of a better word, the Type 44-1 and also the Type 44-2, which we'll cover later, but the Type 44-1 was the stronger of the two types created. This really did look like an emergency formation, was used to man the front line after the destruction of the most of the, after most of the Neu infantry divisions in France in August 1944. I'm uncertain if this structure was used on the Eastern Front, as you can see here, but I suspect something, something similar was used on the Eastern Front, particularly after Army Group Centre disappeared. Looking at the infantry regiment, we can see the infantry battalion remained generally unchanged, but the regimental support was greatly reduced. The anti-tank company was gone. The artillery regiment suffered a 33% reduction in strength, which each, with each battalion consisting of only two batteries of four howitzers instead of three batteries of four howitzers. When we look at the support formations, we can see the biggest change in this new infantry division. The anti-tank battalion was now replaced by separate companies reporting directly to divisional headquarters, which in terms of strength was not a major change. There were still three companies. But this now had to provide anti-tank capacity to the entire division because, remember, the anti-tank guns in the infantry regiments no longer existed. I also suspected the tank destroyer company was equipped with Marder 1s and Marder 2s in the most part rather than the 3s. The Felicia battalion was replaced by a single company, as was the engineering battalion. The Germans lost a lot of equipment in 
the period of June to September 1944, and this was a reflection of this lack of heavy weapons. The other emergency infantry division was the, for want of a better term, Type 44 Type 2 division, which was even less well equipped. This would have been purely a defensive formation and probably manned by militia or older troops or even very younger troops. The infantry regiment retained its Panzerschrecht, although it lost all its anti-tank guns. Strangely, the hardware company had two 7.5cm infantry guns, which may have been 7.5cm anti-tank guns instead. As it's odd for these guns to be there, I think this may have been just an error in the source material. Otherwise, it's, otherwise it's identical to the Type 44-1 version of this infantry division. The artillery regiment was replaced by a single artillery battalion, giving this division only a fraction of its original artillery strength. The support formations already depleted compared to the um, official, the 1943 structure of the infantry division, was further reduced with the tank destroyers and anti-aircraft weapons gone. While the uh, Type 44-1 and 2 divisions were probably emergency divisions formed after the disaster in France and Belarus, the Germans also created a more official new infantry division, the Volksgrenadier divisions. This began in September. They were most famously used in the Ardennes offensive in December, so may not have been available until after September 1944 in any numbers. Perhaps the main difference was the reduction to two infantry reg regiments, one of which was a cycle mobile regiment. The artillery regiment, due to the lack of 10.5cm and 15cm howitzers, started using older 7.5cm guns as well. The Felicia Battalion was replaced with a Felicia Company. Finally, the Engineer Battalion was reduced to two companies, which were cycle mobile, or bicycle mobile, I should say. The anti-tank battalion retained most of its strength, although the number of 7.5cm anti-tank guns were reduced from 12 to 9. I'm uncertain how many tank destroyer companies were actually issued, but there was supposed to be one in each division. One interesting point is, where are the Stugs? These seem to be attached from a higher formation as required, as we'll discuss later in this video. Looking at the Volks Grenadier Regiment, we can see the supporting formations had changed a reasonable amount. The 15cm infantry gun was removed and replaced with 12cm mortar. The infantry gun was effective but very expensive, so the losses between June and August had probably caused this. Regardless, the 12cm mortar is probably a better support weapon, lighter, higher rate of fire and good indirect fire capability. The only missing link or element is direct fire capability which probably the 7.5 centimeter infantry gun could provide regardless. The other interesting formation was the Panzerschreck company which now consisted of 72 anti-tank rocket launchers and had fully replaced the anti-tank guns, again caused by heavy losses in the previous three months I would imagine. At this point the Germans were concentrating all their Panzerschrecks into these company sized formations I'm uncertain if they were parceled out or operated in larger numbers um, as the operation of these formations is a little bit of a grey area for me. In the infantry battalions I strongly suspect there were no Panzerschrecks included, but as one unreliable source indicated that this existed, I have left it in. We now see 7.5cm infantry guns in the battalion, giving the entire regiments more of these weapons. The number of Heavy machine guns was reduced, as was the strength of the infantry company, to um, really little more than, you know, almost half that of the 1939 infantry company. The cycle-equipped, that means a bicycle-equipped regiment, was organised in a similar manner, except one battalion was cycle or bicycle-equipped. I expect this battalion replaced the former Felicia battalion as the mobile battalion-sized formation. Looking at the artillery regiment, the overall number of guns was still less than the old pre-1944 structure, so to compensate, older 7.5cm guns were added. These could have been the World War I 1916 and 1918 field guns, as well as the updated 1938 field guns. Up to now I've covered the organic formations within the infantry division. The German infantry division did receive a number of 
commonly attached formation. The most common were the flak and stupa battalions or companies. While the 2cm flak was removed early in the war, they were still commonly attached to the infantry division, at least at company level or battery level size. The stoops are more interesting. When formed, they were always meant to be kept at corps or army level and handed out as required, but in Russia, the infantry divisions were reluctant to let go of their attached stoop formations, and as a result, they started to adopt a very permanent, permanent stature or nature. This may be why the tank destroyer companies were, were formally added in 1943, although I suspect may well have included Stug companies as well. The old howitzer armed Stugs were highly effective in attacking infantry positions, but when the tides of war changed, their use as an anti-tank weapon became far more common. This video is not focused at formation structure below the company level. However, the structure of the 1937 infantry company is included here for completeness. As you may have noticed, as the war progressed, the manpower of the formation reduced from almost 200 to closer to 100, but its fire remained high due to the inclusion of more automatic weapons, particularly LMGs and, of course, the famous SG-44 assault rifle. The other critical company-level formation within the infantry division was, of course, the German Heavy Weapon Company, or MG Company. The German support company of the infantry battalion was mainly armed with HMGs, or probably more accurately MMGs, and 8cm mortars. This formation seemed to maintain its man manpower strength throughout most of the war. At some point in time, the number of MG platoons increased to 3, before again dropping to 2 again. For those interested in the uniforms, uh, this image provides a view of how the uniform changed during the war. While I cannot vouch for the exact colours here, I'm aware the uniform did appear to get darker during the war, that is, adjusting for fading. This seemed to imply three colours, or this image seems to imply there were three main colours, with M44 being the darkest and M36 being the brightest. The other main change was the hat, which came out in M43, and the short jacket in M44. There are a wide range of other changes which can be identified if you look at this image closely enough. This video is mainly based on research which was used to design or create army lists for army micro-armor rules, which used a platoon to company as its basic element size. As a result, it's not focused on the low-level structure of any formation, which would be the case if designed for skirmish or squad scale rules. At platoon and more so at company scale, it's almost impossible to field accurate formations as single elements. Instead, a battalion is selected, all the manpower and weapons totaled, and then divided by the required divisor, perhaps 5 for tanks and guns and 50 for manpower. The result is an accurate battalion, but below that point the elements do not represent any actual formations. A company scale element, or a company scale, where an element equals a company, this aggregation is done at a regimental level. The result is the battalion or regiments are historically accurate, giving the player the required level of national difference to make the game more interesting and less like chess or a board game. For skirmish type or squad level games, the focus needs to go down the organisational hierarchy, which is not being attempted in this video, although I did include the company strengths or structure for 1936 as a FYI. Now this completes my video on this subject. I have no doubt I shall be updating this video in the future as I obtain new source material. I have posted some of the source material that I used in this video in the URL shown in this image and also in the comments section of this YouTube image. Denken Sie daran, immer für Hill, Heimatland zu kämpfen.